Okay, here we go. We're going to be doing some testing today on steam reforming and the reduction of steam using hot iron. Uh, I have seen that it produces a lot of hydrogen gas. I want to see what type of flame we can get going off of this. Basically what I'm going to be doing is taking this brass pipe and filling it up with this small amount of steel wool. This is the exact piece I'm going to put in there. Then I'm going to mount this onto this pipe where I'm going to try to get some really hot steam. I'm going to try to get it superheated up to about 650 Celsius. Although I don't think I'm going to be able to do that because I busted my coil accidentally. I uh, scored it hoping to make the resistance higher at a certain point. But then when I went to bend this pipe it busted. So we may see some a failure there on this pipe. But if not, I'm going to have this connected here. And I'm going to blast some steam through there. And I'm going to get it hot with a butane flame also. And I'm going to see if I can get a hydrogen flame to burn on the very end of this. Supposedly, steel wool or any type of iron scrap, when it's red hot, when steam is passed over it, it will reduce the steam into hydrogen gas and iron oxide. So because of uh, the fact that I want to build a device that can turn regular trash into a fuel, I want to see how much hydrogen is produced off of the metal alone. I'm also going to be using this vice, device to uh, do some steam reforming. I'm going to see how it goes. I definitely got to change this pipe though because I broke it. But anyway, while we're doing some testing, we're going to test the glue that was used to construct the test device. I got some JB Weld and some Power Poxy Plumbers adhesive. This stuff right here is what the dielectric connector is made out of. I also have a piece of plastic pipe conduit in there. That's this stuff right here, except for it's a straight piece. It'll probably melt. We'll see what happens, though. Um, I've reinforced it with some string. It's cotton string. I happen to have tested this before as far as using string to bind things, and it works out really good. So hopefully everything goes okay. The JB Weld is used on the valves connected to this pipe because I, had, I don't have a brazer or anything. I have no tools really right now. So we're going to see if this thing holds together and see if we can get a hydrogen flame. I'm going to kick on the superheater. Wow, that makes a big difference. I don't know if you guys can see this jet with that superheater on. Probably can't see that. I should turn the lights out and shine a flashlight. Heater's on. I'm pulling about 18 amps on the device. I'm going to start heating this up. Uh-oh. Dang it. Well, you've seen what happened there. <laughs> that steam was really super heated. Great. That's not at all what I had in mind. But at least we get a steam show. Perfect. No sign of hydrogen yet. I'm going to try that a different way. I realize you can't really see nothing with all this clutter and the reflection of the computer screen on this glass and the steam and I'm going to try just direct contact this time. I'm 
see any signs of hydrogen gas. My JB welds at about 170 degrees. This epoxy is about 143. Maybe the reaction is just so endothermic that I don't have what it takes here. So basically, the JB weld and everything is holding off good. I don't see any leaks. The steel wool didn't really oxidize. It turned blue. So apparently I didn't get it hot enough. It seems to be burning. Oh wow, it is. Without a flame. Can you see that? Stuff's burning. I can see it kindling inside of there. You think I didn't burn a house down by just throwing that somewhere? Whoa. I don't know what that noise was, but as soon as I dumped that water on that steel wool, I, I heard something strange. It might have been this. I don't know, that was weird. Okay, so basically, I didn't see any signs of hydrogen production by passing steam over white hot iron, but also that states the process is highly endothermic, so it's just a possibility that I don't have the energy I need, but um, either way, I got some of the data I wanted. I wanted to know exactly how easy it was to do, but apparently it's not easy at all. I am liking how these glues are hanging up so far. Uh, the plumber's amazing putty this stuff is pretty good it seems to be holding out okay on some of these top parts I've used it a lot in the past it's uh, pretty good for something you're gonna have to tear apart later because it holds good but when it's time to remove it it comes off nicely this stuff here ain't so good it's about the same thing as goop it takes far longer to dry it's far more liquidy far lower viscosity and it also is a little bit more elastic than goop, but I don't like This is really stupid. I should be on the other side of the glass with the computer. I don't see any signs of pressure up yet. I do hear something. I have a... Well, I take that back. There's a little something in there. Maybe this gauge just sucks. Okay, so if anything, we got a steam show here. That's about it today. Steam show and one failure after another. Okay, so basically reducing steam by using white hot iron isn't as easy as it's red. So I'm going to have to build a far more elaborate setup than that. And also I learned, as you've seen, that resistance heating is a bad idea for a super steam heating apparatus unless you fine tune it. There was just too much going on at once for me to pay attention to any one thing. I didn't get an amperage reading on the high amperage transformer. I didn't see it burning apart. You can't really see it in the video. So there's a lot of things that went wrong that I wish didn't happen. So we definitely learned what you can't do in this video.